You're watching Local Edition. Brad Pomerantz here in San Diego County, joined by a council member from the city of San Diego. His name is Mark Kersey, and you live in San Diego for a reason. It is absolutely gorgeous in this community. Um, part of the challenge, though, with living in such a beautiful community is folks will come here to try to make it. And sadly, some don't, mm. and they fall on hard times. And here in San Diego, the homeless rate is rising. Mm -hmm. In the last 10 years or so, San Diego has gone from the 12th largest homeless population to the fourth largest. It's nothing compared to LA County, which is the first largest, but regardless, there's enough misery to go around. Right. What are you seeing, sir? Well, first of all, thanks for having me of on. Of course. Brian. You know, this is something that uh, it is a, it's a regional issue. Um, it's, it's not a district issue. It's not a city issue. This is really a, a region-wide issue. And a lot of it is due to the high cost of housing here in San Diego. Uh, we also have, of course, a large number of military veterans. And uh, unfortunately, you know, there are issues with some of those folks with PTSD right. and, and mental health, a and it becomes a large and issue. And let's break that down, because yeah. there are a lot of important points to discuss. Mm -hmm. When you talk about how this is a regional issue, mm -hmm. that's unique because it had been that homeless would congregate in the metaphoric skid row, mm -hmm. wherever that may have been. But now we see those that have fallen on hard times are living everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not just on the metaphoric skid row, and that's hard mm -hmm. because there are issues of concern, safety, but then we want to be compassionate, but we're not sure how to be compassionate because we're afraid they may hurt. So, so, so where do you go with that? A lot of it is getting folks the treatment they need, mm -hmm. whether it's mental health treatment or substance abuse treatment. And of course, on some level, they have to actually want that treatment. Mm -hmm. So that's an issue as well, because not all of them do. So um, there are a lot of complex issues that are part of this. And uh, it's obviously not easy to solve. If it was, it would have been done by now. So it's, um, it's something that uh, I was recently at a, a, a homelessness town hall forum. And there were various stakeholders there representing downtown interests, representing the hotel industry, representing communities. And uh, it's something that I think it's going to take that level of concerted effort. What did you hear? What did you learn? There's a lot of frustration. I think that's the primary thing that, that, that was evident, is that people are frustrated with the situation, whether you're talking about downtown or Pacific Beach, right. uh, other parts of, of the city. Um, this is a, a frustrating situation because even when it seems like we make progress, uh, the population still grows. And a lot of that is due to San Diego's favorable climate. Yet, the numbers do suggest that while over a 10-year period, we do see homelessness rising, we do see homelessness dropping year to year. So th that's good news. It may not be good news if the homeless person is on your corner. Mm -hmm. And the news is especially good as it relates to veterans, mm -hmm. which in San Diego, with such a large veterans population, that is pivotal to see. Talk us through why, in your mind, we are seeing successes with the veterans population. Well, San Diego has one of, if not the largest concentration of, of veterans in right. the entire country. And, uh, and that's something that generally is a very positive thing for our region. And I think San Diego really values the military Indeed. presence there. Um, but, but it also means we do have more than our fair share of, of homeless veterans. And so uh, about a year ago, the city rolled out an initiative to house, homeless, house a thousand homeless veterans. And uh, that was really based on the concept of trying to incentivize uh, landlords to accept uh, vouchers to get folks off the street with a military background. What's stunning, though, about what you just described is that there are these vouchers that are available, but because it's so expensive to live yeah. in San Diego and L.A. and San Francisco, the vouchers don't provide enough cash for the landlord. So they're between a rock and a hard place. That's right. That's exactly right. And, and a lot of that's due to supply issues. Right. We're just we're not building enough housing stock to meet the demand that we have, and, and particularly at the uh, what you would call kind of the middle income right. part of the market. I want to get there in a second, but sure. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that apparently your program is bearing fruit mm -hmm. because in the last year, veterans homelessness is down 16 yep. percent. The sheltered um, veterans homeless population is down 22 percent, unsheltered down 9 percent. That's real, mm -hmm. and I don't think we should ignore the success stories. The question, though, becomes, how can you transfer the success in decreasing veterans' homelessness to the general population? Because that's the nut we've had difficulty cracking. Right, right. 
And I think a lot of it will be based on the experience of the House a, a Thousand Homeless Veterans right. Initiative, right? So the lessons learned from that, um, that was kind of a, you could think of it as almost a, a, a pilot right. for I got the, it. the problem as a whole. And, and I think that, um, you know, it's, it has been successful. Obviously, there's still work to be done, but it has proved to be successful so far. And I, my hope is that we can learn some lessons from that and apply them to the general population. Councilman, I want to talk about housing. You suggested, you know, there, there are two elements of housing. There's affordable housing right. and housing that is affordable. Right. Let's talk about housing that is affordable. There's not a lot of it. Right. In California, the LAO recently released a report, Legislative Analyst Office. California homes on an average cost about $466,000. That's two and a half times greater than the national average. Mm -hmm. And that's the entire state. San Diego, your district, good grief. Right. Housing that is affordable is hard to come by. It is, and the problem is, is that the salaries don't keep up with that. Right. So if the salaries were paying two and a half times the national, <laughs> right. it'd be one thing. But that's not really the way it works. So um, that is a significant problem, and, and it's driven in large measure because people want to be in San Diego. We understand why. Uh, but it's also driven in part by the fact that we're not building enough housing right. supply. And that's exactly right. And what we know in California is that we need to be building about 200,000 new units every year, especially on the coast. Mm -hmm. Here we are on the coast, and we're building about 100,000. And we just don't have enough. I mean, San Diego County is down in yep. terms of its requirement for building the housing that's that's sought. That's right. No, that's exactly right. And and, and the the issue is that there's a few different issues. Obviously, you know, our state is a difficult state in which to get things done. There's a lot of regulation, a lot of environmental restrictions uh, compared to a state like Texas, where you can kind of do right. almost whatever you want. So that's part of it. Um, but also, you've got um, some some factors in there that. Uh, they just right now the, the the way things are priced, it incentivizes builders to put up uh, a product that is at the top end of the market. I'm glad you. So million dollar condos downtown, for example. I'm so glad you brought that up because, as you know, we do face a uh, challenging regulatory environment in yeah. our state, and Governor Brown, the Democrat Governor Brown, was looking to wipe away some of the regulations for local projects that targeted the lower end of the income spectrum, but a lot of folks on local city councils, it made them queasy. Right. They didn't want that power to be taken away. Right. So ultimately, I saw you at the League of California Cities, that right. plan didn't go anywhere. Right. I feel your pain, don't get me wrong, pointing no fingers. I don't know where you were on this, but how do we create that balance where we want some regulation, mm -hmm. but not to the extent that we can't build? Yeah, I think I think we're, there needs to be more of a balance. I mm -hmm. think right now um, it's it can be difficult to work through the process if you're trying to put in a new uh, a new housing development to to just go through the multi-year process it takes to get the community buy-in mm -hmm. and, and put in a project that makes sense and is actually going to be profitable for the developer. Um, so that that can be difficult. And what happens is is that by the time you get to the end of that process, oftentimes the costs are such because you've offered so many amenities and so many other things to make the community happy that, um, that the, 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 the end product is more expensive than I think most of us would like. And so I think that's really gonna be the challenge moving forward for policymakers like us is how do you uh, really incentivize and, and get the communities on board, some communities with higher density, which right. admittedly does not work everywhere, but it does work, for example, in downtown. Right. Um, how do you incentivize folks to want uh, to, to see more development? When a lot of folks, because it is such a challenge to get uh, a house in San Diego, right. they get in and then they, they don't necessarily want to see a lot of change after that. Okay. So these, these, are, these are tough issues. No doubt. He's Mark Kersey from San Diego City Unbred Pomerantz Local Edition.